Let's talk about evaluating rational exponents. To evaluate a rational exponent, convert to a radical. Let's do a few examples. If we're asked to evaluate 32 to the 2 fifths, we know that the 2 represents the exponent and the 5 represents the index. So now that we know that, we've refreshed our memory, we can rewrite this whole thing with 32 inside the radical, the index is 5, and the exponent is 2. Let's go ahead and prime factor 32. When we prime factor 32, we get 16, divide by 2, we get 8, divide by 2 again, we get 4, divide by 2 again, we get 2, divide by 2, we get 1. So 32 is equivalent to 2 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's awesome, because if we plug 2 to the 5th in for 32, we get the 5th root of 2 to the 5th, raised to the second power. If I divide the exponent by the index, I get 1, remainder 0. So I can pull out 1, 2, with 0 remainders. Remember, though, that it's all still raised to the second power, so 2 to the second is 4. And that's my final answer. If I'm asked to evaluate 27 raised to the negative 4 thirds, once again, I know that this is my exponent, and the 3, or the denominator, is my index. Since it's a negative exponent, I know that it's going to be in the denominator, and I'm going to have a radical sign, where the 3 is my index. Since I've shifted the whole expression into the denominator, I've changed the sign of my exponent from a negative 4 to a positive 4. And 27 is a perfect cube of 3. So 3 to the third is the same as 27. It's a good idea to know your perfect squares and your perfect cubes by this point in um, your math classes. From here, we can continue to simplify. 3 to the third, where the exponent is divided by the index, gives you 1 with a remainder of 0. So 1, 3 can be pulled out of the radical with 0 as your remainder. Once again, you have to remember that your exponent is still 4 on the outside. We can continue to simplify this by putting 1 over 3 to the 4th. 3 to the 4th is 81. So your answer is 1 over 81, or 181st.